Hello everyone, at this tutorial I'd like to highlight the programming star rules for functions. The very first rule is you shall follow the camel case convention when naming a function. For example, if I'm creating a new function that I want to use for setting motor speed, a, I need to follow the camel case convention. So. I'd write it something like that, set motor speed, where the very first word starts with lowercase and then every following word in the function name starts with an uppercase as a uh, case delimiter. And that's in a sense is uh, the camel case convention. And then I can continue my function. And I can set the variable type to unsigned 16, for example, and I'll name the function parameter as speed. So that's rule number one, you shall follow the camel case convention. The second rule is, is a very important one, and that's function names must be clear and concise. So in other words, that they need to be as short and as descriptive as possible. And obviously they need to be very clear to understand. So this function, this is, obviously a really good example of a naming uh, of a function name a, a bad one would be full of abbreviation and vague like sit is speedy uh, like an abbreviation for speed and probably the parameter will look something like this and value so that's a bad practice because this one obviously is not clear so it's not clear that we're sitting motor speed uh, and it's also um, not descriptive, uh, like it doesn't have any description of the details of what this function is expected to do internally. Uh, and you can even go further than the first one, like set motor speed. Uh, you might be wondering is if I can add set speed RPM to even specify what the speed unit is. Um, however, I don't like to do that as part of the function name. Um, I prefer to do this part of the variable type. So instead of using unsigned 16 for the speed parameter, I'd rather do type diff unsigned integer 16 as the base type and the type and the user type now I can call it motor or I can just speed RPM. Uh, underscore t for a type diff and then I can use this instead of unsigned 16 and this one will be very clear that this speed unit is rpm that's another topic but I just wanted to highlight that here uh, because it's quite useful and now the third rule is if you are writing a function that is part of the library you should better use the library name as a prefix to the function. Uh, let me highlight that. So um, if I am gonna use the MPU 6050 sensor library and I wanna create a new function there, I need to use the library prefix. So just the library name in full lowercase, but if the name is long, you can use camel case for the name. So if the library name is MPU 6050, dash um, like IMU or anything like that, you can just do IMU here, like in a camel case way. But never mind, uh, if you have just a single name for the library, it's gonna look something like this, where you add the library name as a prefix to the function, and then make sure you separate that with an underscore uh, with the actual function name that again should start with camel case convention where the first word is lowercase. All right, um, and now the fourth rule is if we have a function that is a callback, we need to add CB, uh, like the letters C and B, uh, to denote that this one is a callback. Um, and let me highlight that with a quick example. Um, let's assume that we want to add a new function to the MPU 6050 library to um, trigger a callback when we have a high altitude, when a high altitude is detected. Um, that normally would look 
something like this. So without the callback rule four, it would you would simply write it as a normal function, mpu6050, um, as a prefix, and that will be high altitude detected, uh, and possibly a parameter as well with the actual altitude height. So unsigned 16, and we're going to call this altitude. Um, however, rule four uh, really helps to improve code readability and uh, make it a lot easier for us to spot uh, callback functions, like not normal functions. We need to add uh, CB here to denote callback. So that will be CB and then high altitude detected start with uppercase because that's a camel case convention. CB already started with lowercase and now the next word starts with an uppercase. And that's briefly rule number four. If you have a callback function, you should begin the function name with CB. And no need to do CB underscore, just uh, fully uh, merged with the function name and it will be at the very beginning of the function name. Um, and now rule five, if we have a Boolean returning function, uh, like something that checks for a Boolean condition, the function should start with is and then the function name. Um, so a good example here would be if we're using this IMU accelerometer, if you want to detect a free fall uh, with a function that checks for this condition, uh, I can simply write it as uh, in this particular way. So according to rule five, I need to do is free fall detected. And that's simply the fifth rule. Um, and this is going to help us quite a lot to, with the Boolean returning function or functions, not necessarily a Boolean returning function, because sometimes you'd have functions that returns a Boolean state uh, just to mark if the function was successful or have failed. Um, here I'm referring to an actual Boolean condition, like is freefall detected and things like that. Okay. So this is rule five. And now moving on to rule number six, uh, which states that all functions shall have a single exit whenever possible. Well, that's very helpful. Um, if you have functions that shall terminate or return when a certain failure occur. So if we fail to do the first step, we, we just want to exit and not continue to do the next steps and possibly the next lines of code and the function also have another return and then you'll have the final function return. Uh, this rule is a very useful one and in fact it's a safety rule and if you can design your function so that it only has a single exit point like a single return point uh, like in this case just a single return um, then that will be quite safe and secure and will be very easy to debug uh, and run as well and you will minimize any potential uh, failures uh, or bugs um, and the way we do that is that we need to deal with it there are multiple ways to deal with this i'm going to illustrate one method one particular method that's very simple and one that i use very often um, so let's create an, a function to demonstrate this um, Let's assume that I want to add a new function here to read the load current, okay? Um, so a function that returns Boolean, and I'll use the library prefix, uh, and I'm going to call the function read load current. Um, and this function returns current by pointer, so the function parameter would be a current passed by reference so that we can write to it back. Okay, now I'm going to implement this inside my source uh, file. Now we're gonna demonstrate quite well how you can manage multiple return, uh, multiple exit points and how, how you can improve that. Okay, now let's assume that this function is going to read the load current through some UART interface sensor. Okay, so we're gonna do some UART read. And then UART is going to read some string. So we need to parse that string into a number. 
Um, and then let's say we're just going to do some formatting to the number and then um, like return or exit. Okay. Um, in the ideal way, we first do uart read, and usually we do something like that. So if we have a uart read function that reads some string, and let's define a string array, uh, we're going to call it data array, and let's give it a size of 25 characters, and let's pass this to the read function. And um, let's assume that uart read works in the following way. It returns a boolean and it takes on a character pointer. Okay. And it does some, something inside like read uart. Okay. So this one is going to return boolean on success. So we can check if this one fails. So if this one is not equal to true, we can simply return false. From this function that's normally how you do that you would exit the function immediately and not do the following lines of code uh, because you are failed and there's no point we parse uh, the string of that uh, failed function okay um, and then after that you're going to call some parsing function um, something that um, let's call this um, parse current and let's assume this one takes on the data character array pointer and it returns the current in floating point okay so let's call this raw current current in raw format and we're going to initialize this variable to zero and then this function is gonna take the pointer so that it can write back to this variable and um, and let's say this function returns boolean as well something like this now I'm just creating these functions in the fly just to demonstrate uh, the multiple return or multiple exit points scenario. Okay, just bear with me a minute. I think everything will be extremely clear. Okay, and now let's assume this function does um, convert string and then writes back to the value um, some processed number. Um, I'll say one, two, three, point four, or five, whatever. Okay. And we're going to call it, if this one failed, then it's going to return false. And we want to do exactly the same thing. So if this one failed, we're just going to, we're going to return false. Okay. If, if it's successful, we want to continue and do some formatting. Um, for example, we can do some formatting like, um, we're going to write the value back. Uh, we're going to like return the red current value but we're going to apply some formatting so you're going to multiply the raw current by let's say 0.01 like a you know scaling down um, assuming the current is in a, a unit that's multiplied by 100 so we need to divide by 100 to get the actual current in amps okay uh, that's just a uh, an arbitrary formatting method and then if everything is okay and if we did an exit in here we just want to return uh, true denoting that this function now is successful now as you can see um, i gave i created this function as an example to demonstrate that we have multiple exit points and rule number six clearly states that function shall have a single exit point whenever possible okay well sometimes it gets very complex to achieve that uh, but most of the time you can do that and that's what i'm gonna highlight here so one very simple way to manage the multiple exit points and make them just a single exit point is to introduce a Boolean variable that you can call as success. And you can initialize it to false. Okay. And then instead of returning here, you can just simply write the state of this one into the is success variable. And naturally this one returns true when it's successful. So we just need to assign whatever this function returns into the is success variable. Um, and then after that, the next statement, uh, we can just simply check if, if the previous one returned success. So if, if is success in the previous step, we want to continue and do parse current. So um, this is a conditional 
uh, statement. Um, and then similarly, we also want to assign s-success the boolean return by parse function into our s-success variable. Okay, this way we can get rid of this previous one. Um, and now simply we can return as success because now guess what the very first you are treat if it's succeeded is going to return true and then the next statement will check if the previous one was true it's going to continue and update the as success variable with whatever this function returns well if this function returned false we don't have to do the formatting so we can also do another check here which is a really useful one um, if the previous one is successful we want to do the formatting otherwise we just don't want to do it okay and then finally we're going to return success in this case uh, using this method when any of them fail it's going to prevent it to jump in the next statement and it will automatically get to this stage and return false so that's a very simple and secure method to handle multiple exit points. And that's a summary of rule number six. And there are obviously other methods, but this one is a very simple one. Um, I decided to highlight and uh, demonstrate to you. Um, and now we've got only a couple of rules left. Rule number seven is that you need to make a function static if it's used privately within a source file so if i have a function that i'm only going to use as part of the source file and i'm not going to use it from any other locations then i need to make that function static now a good example here is the r squared c read and write functions this sensor uses i squared c and if you want to get accelerometer x data what's going to happen in the background is that this function is going to call some i squared c routine uh, which is not directly called by main or any other file um, so you can make those functions static um, so that will be something like this static boolean uh, mpu 6050 i squared c read or i squared c write or both of them and this function would probably look something like this which it will take data pointer and the length of the data that you want to uh, uh, write and then we'll have some um, i squared c routine here all right um, and so this function is marked as static and i can define it somewhere at the top as well uh, do the function prototypes if i have to okay so this is rule number um, seven and finally rule number eight is to Avoid using names for standard library function. This one is very straightforward. So you're not allowed to use standard library functions like printf, scanf, um, all of the math functions and things like that. Um, so you're not allowed to call this function printf because that's a standard library function. Um, and that's all I want to highlight in this video. Um, I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching.